Uh, you were in your early years, you were a Marxist. Yes. Uh, what happened? How did you uh, get away from that? Uh, I took a job in the government. I went to the University of Chicago as a Marxist. After a year of, of uh, studying under Milton Friedman, I was still a Marxist. But uh, one summer of working in the government was enough to uh, turn, start, start returning around. Really, what happened to you there? Well, nothing happened to me, but that I realized that the government was n nowhere close to being capable of doing what people on the left wanted the government to do. And that, in fact, we'd be lucky if they didn't make things worse. For example, I was in the Labor Department, and uh, they administered the minimum wage law. Uh, to me, the question was, did minimum wage laws make poor people better off or worse off? Mm -hmm. That was not the question for them. The minimum wage law provided one-third of their to total budget. And they weren't going to look at this in this other way. And as I tried to get into the question, of does this cause unemployment and stuff like that, uh, there was no enthusiasm whatsoever for that whole line of reasoning. Uh, you've written a trilogy of books about, about people you call the anointed. Yeah. which, which are, are basically liberals mm -hmm. uh, in American society. What do you, what do you, are you, what do you mean by calling them anointed or self-anointed? That's right. Uh, there, there are people who seriously believe that they are wiser and nobler than others. And the way to improve society is to have the government force people to follow what the anointed want rather than have, let people do what they themselves want to do. And uh, there are all kinds of fiascos that follow in the wake of this kind of, this kind of notion. Conservatives are routinely blamed for not caring about people. And yet you say just the opposite is true, that it, it's liberals who care about their vision yes. of how the world should be, but not about real-life human beings. Absolutely. I think the busing thing was a classic example. You would be hard-pressed to show how black people, white people, or any other people were benefited by this. But the liberals loved it. It enabled them to be morally superior to those who were fighting against bu busing. Uh, and and the, the evidence, one way or the other, really did not interest them. Aren't uh, conservative free market ideas sometimes hard to sell? I think of the, uh, uh, the labor unions and liberals are now attacking Walmart mm -hmm. and saying Walmart pays its employees uh, too little. Uh, I mean, that's a nice thing to be for. You know, you want more money for people who work at Walmart. What's wrong with that? Hey, I want more money for myself. I, I, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that someone else has an obligation to pay it. Uh, if you're paying people for their work, uh, instead of just paying them for what they think they need, uh, then clearly these people wouldn't be working for Walmart if someone else thought their work was worth more than Walmart is paying. So uh, why, why do you think liberals have jumped on Walmart? Uh, because of its success? Because of its success. That's, that's a sufficient reason. Uh, they, they, they really are for helping, uh, they're for helping people who are disadvantaged, as they put it. Mm -hmm. uh, wh whereas I think conserv conservatives want, want to stop people from being disadvantaged. You know, they, you know, the, the liberals want to help the poor while they're poor, but really the biggest benefit is to stop them from being poor. And th that they have very little interest in. What is the liberal premise? I guess uh, uh, the Rousseau notion, you know, that man is born free but is everywhere and chains, that the real problem of the world is that the institutions are wrong. If the institutions were right, then man, would, there, there was nothing in human nature that would cause us to be unhappy. It's the fact that we have the wrong institution. What is the conservative premise? That uh, man is flawed from, uh, from day one, and that uh, you, there are no solutions, there are only trade-offs, and whatever you do to deal with one of man's flaws, it creates another problem, but that you try to get the best trade-off you can get, and that's all you can hope for. Uh, I've often said uh, there, there are three questions that I think would destroy most of the arguments on the left, and the first is, uh, compared to what? The second is, at what cost? And the third is, what hard evidence do you have? Now, there are very few ideas on the left that can pass all three of those kinds of things. Can conservative ideas pass those? Yes, I think so, because they, they, they don't assume that there, that there is a solution out there. Uh, you know, Adam Smith didn't believe that, the, that, the, that the, the, either the government or the market could solve all problems, that you have to be able to simply tolerate certain things. Uh, and the idea to the left of tolerating any evil, you know, that they want to stamp out the last vestige of segregation. Really? At what price? At what price?